Welcome back, all my fine aviation enthusiast friends. Welcome back to the Almost Airplane Show! So today, I uh, was reading my comments and somebody asked uh, that, uh, how I get the assistive touch to work with the PlayStation controller. Um, so I, I currently use just a regular iPad. It's a 6th generation iPad that I got in 2018. And I'm using just a regular PS4 Dual Shock controller. Uh, I have not tried any other controller, like an Xbox or any other type of controller, and I have not tried any other iPad. This is only it, it should theoretically it should work with any iPad with any controller. Um, with Android tablets, uh, I don't need to use a controller. The the reason I use uh, the controller uh, with the assistive touch feature is that way I can show everyone what I'm pushing uh, in the cockpit while I'm flying and while I'm setting everything up uh, before flight. Um, without the assistive touch with the controller, uh, the assistive touch does not really work. Uh, at least with my iPad, the assistive touch by itself really does not work when the screen is in landscape mode. Uh, when it's uh, in portrait mode, when it's straight up and down, uh, which you can't use with Aerofly. Uh, assistive Touch works phenomenal, uh, but with landscape mode, uh, it does not work. So let me let me show you my settings uh, first. Let's do that, and then uh, you know we'll get into um, how I have everything kind of set up. So in your settings for the iPad, if you go down to accessibility. Go down to accessibility and then we're going to push touch right here under physical and motor. Let's push touch, right? Very first option up there is assistive touch. So it's off right now. Uh, I do have a shortcut enabled to turn it on quickly, uh, which I will show you uh, momentarily. But uh, so what you want to do is go to assistive touch, okay? And if it's your first time in assistive touch, what you want to do is under custom gestures, you want to create a new gesture. So I have mine, it's listed as tap. So what, what I did to set that up was, I went to create new gesture, and then I just tapped once on the screen. Blink. I tapped on the screen, then I clicked save, and then I named it tap, okay? So you can click save, and then you can name it, you know, this will be tap two, I guess. Tap two for buttery landings. All right, so click save, and now, as you can see, you have tap or tap two, okay? So so now that's set up, that's the first part. What you wanna do after that, if you are using a controller, is use game controller, make sure that is checked. You know, make sure that's green lit. Make sure it's on, okay? Now, uh, these other settings you really don't need to do anything with. Uh, those are for like more uh, assistive devices that people need if they have trouble like using their hands or you know using their fingers. Uh, it's not for gaming controller or or what we use it for. Okay. Uh, if you want to set up custom actions, you can do that. So when the assistive touch icon is on the screen, you can use these custom touch actions. So you can tap it once to bring up the menu or double tap and you can choose really there's tons of stuff you can choose uh, I don't really ever use it because I use the controller now but um, if you go down here again under pointer devices oh shit that's not the right place hang on let's go I think it's back one screen uh, back again Uh, oh, yeah, let, well, let's turn it on first, actually. There's the shortcut down here. Hang on, I'm looking for the shortcut. Where is it? Guided access. Oh, yeah, okay, so down here at the very, down here at the very bottom is accessibility shortcut. That's the thing, that's the next step you want to do, okay? So, accessibility shortcut triple click the home button. So if you push the home button three times quickly, it'll turn assistive touch on or it'll turn it off. Now, one thing I have seen with assistive touch 
is if you click it three times, when it's in landscape mode, the icon doesn't show up anywhere, right? I clicked it, it's on, right? So if we go up to uh, touch, we can see that it's on, right? Click it three times, it'll turn off, right? However, if what I have to do is, such a pain in the ass, I have to put it in landscape mode. Then if I click it three times, now it turns on. And then if I go back to landscape mode now, voila, it's there. So it it's really ass backwards. I, I don't know why Apple has it set up that way. But um, what I do after that is under pointer control, right? So pointer control is now showing up in this menu because assistive touch is now on, okay? So pointer control, if you click that, here's where I chose like the color and the size of the pointer and the scrolling speed and and all that. So you can increase the contrast, you can automatically hide the pointer, which I have both of those on. You can choose the color that you want. You know, I chose red just because I figured that would show up the best in the cockpit. Um, there's a lot of colors inside the cockpit and red is not usually one of them. There's a lot of gray and blue and uh, sometimes green and so uh, I figured red would be the best and I didn't want the border to be super big so I just have it set there but that's pretty much how I have it set up for the accessibility feature. Now when you have your controller connected, let me um, go to Aerofly. I was just getting ready to do a flight but let me um, open it up. I'll just pick up from where I'm getting ready to take off. Uh, one thing that I've noticed, oh, you know what? I'm not going to be able to talk live. Shit. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I'll record uh, what I'm going to do with the controller and then I'll just have to edit my voice over it. Uh, <laughs> the, the iPad with their uh, feature with the screen, uh, you know, recording the screen. Uh, if you try to do audio at the same time as playing the game, you'll never be able to hear your voice. Um, it doesn't record the audio based on what you can hear. It records the audio of the game based on the internal sound. So there's no way to turn that off in the game. Um, so give me, give me a minute. I'll uh, uh, get this set up and then uh, I'll, I'll, well, for, for y'all, it'll just be an instant transition. Uh, for, for me, it's going to take me a couple minutes, but uh, just hang tight. I'll uh, get into the plane and I'll show you, you know, how I do the controls with the uh, PS4 controller while I'm in the plane. So hang tight for a moment. All right, we're back with the airplane show. So, uh, well, the almost airplane show today. So the first thing I do when I open up the Aerofly is turn on Bluetooth and then I will turn on my controller. Um, now the controller is connected and then when I go into the plane, um, the share button on your PS4 controller, the button on the top, the little black button on the top left, that will enable uh, or turn off um, the game control mode. So right now, let me uh, just put the parking brake on. You see how it says game mode disabled? That's because I uh, pushed the share button on the, the top left. So, um, so let's run through the buttons here. So the the left joystick will move the cursor all around the screen without moving the yoke, okay? When it's in the game mode disabled mode. Game mode disabled, the left stick moves that assistive touch circle around. However, even though game mode is disabled, if you use the left, I'm sorry, if you use the right thumb stick, it will still turn the yoke. So try not to use the right thumb stick at all. Uh, oops. Well, uh, if you hit the square button, this happens. <laughs> Shit. Sorry about that. All right, let's go back to the game. So square button will take you, I guess, completely out of the game. I've never really pushed square before. Um, circle button, uh, if you push that a couple of times, that will bring you back to the main screen. It will also bring up the menu for the assistive touch feature. So that's what the circle does now. If you want to interact with a, with a button, you push, go to the button, push X. And then you have to actually put your finger on the screen. You can't turn a dial using the controller. You have to just interact with it, push X, and then use your finger to turn the dial. Uh, the triangle button uh, you can use to drag 
like the switches. So I'll go here, I'll push triangle. It says start dragging, and then I just use the left thumbstick, move it forward or back, and that will drag, uh, you know, forward or back. Uh, it does side to side. It's a little more difficult to do side to side, but it only really works with these toggle switches. Uh, and then just to deactivate it, push the triangle button again. The top, the R1 button will bring up the co-pilot menu. Uh, L2 and R2, the two triggers, will activate the rudders, as you can see on the, the floor. Now it's moving the rudders left and right. The L1 button will bring up the menu for all the different views, and then you can use your D-pad to cycle through, and then when you get to the one you want, just push the X button. Uh, and then the uh, D-pad itself, when, you're, when game mode is disabled, uh, you can only use left and right on the D-pad to control the flaps. So pushing it to the right will move the flaps down, pushing it to the left will uh, move the flaps, you know, will reduce the flaps, move them, you know. Uh, when game mode is turned on, however, you can still do the flaps, but now the D-pad, if you push up, it will start to turn the, it'll start, you can see the thrusters go up. If you hold it all the way up, it'll put the thrusters all the way up. Pushing down on the D-pad will, um, you know, uh, lower the throttle, so, uh, and then you can use the right thumbstick when the game mode is turned on, you can use the right thumbstick to uh, control the yoke, you know, so you can turn the plane, go up and down, all that is done with the right thumbstick. Um, the left thumbstick you can use to view and look around, however, it is not going to bring up the assistive touch icon. So um, I hope this helps. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um, it, it's, a, it's a little cumbersome to use the controller, to be honest. It's not integrated very, very well. Uh, and there's nowhere online that shows what the buttons do. So for me, it was a lot of trial and error, uh, just figuring it out. But, you know, I do appreciate y'all stopping by. If you have any questions uh, on this or, or anything else I, I said in the video, just let me know. And uh, I'm going to make this video, put it up, and then get back in that plane and try to get that soft, buttery landing. Please like, subscribe, share the video, click the thumbs up, hit the notification bell, do all that good shit, and uh, I'll see you in the friendly skies soon. See ya!